So welcome to the next session of Introduction to Programming. And we're already at chapter one, the introduction, where we'll see what programming really is about on a very high level. And then we quickly jump into the programming itself, because that is how you really are going to learn how to program. So this is something I will quickly just show algorithms and programs, and then we'll go a little bit more in detail on our first C++ program. We already wrote a little program, but this one will be a little bit more detailed. Right, so if you have a problem and you want to solve this with a computer, you'll need to do a, a couple of steps. And uh, the first couple of steps are the most important ones. So you require intuition, creativity to present a certain idea, a certain solution that you can then um, convert into an algorithm. Now this is a mental exercise that requires your brain uh, and from the algorithm you can program this into a program. Um, that requires programming skills. Once you're there in this uh, yellow box over here, now this is what we're going to do in this course basically. Once you have your program, your C++ program, which you can read uh, up to that point, the, the computer will do the rest. It will compile this into executable, an executable that the computer can understand and deal with, and then you have an executable thing that you can run on your computer. Right, algorithms are an essential part here. It is a set of instructions that have definite meanings and are a certain formal meaning, meaning that computers can understand and therefore need to be exact. If you make slight changes here and there, your meaning might be completely different. And this is something that will come back again and again. If you, for instance, have capitals in your uh, source code, where normally you should have not capitals, and suddenly the computer does not uh, see this as the same variable, for instance, or as the same name, and it will have completely different meanings or it will throw errors. So <clears throat> the set of instructions that you're using is very well defined and you can't deviate from these. And this language that you're using, therefore, needs to be really precise. You could see an algorithm as a prescription uh, or a, a recipe of how to do a certain thing. Similar how you can do uh, a recipe for cooking food, like for instance baking a pizza. And also in these recipes, you have very similar items that you would have also in a programming exercise. You would have to deal with certain components, certain objects. You would have a certain order that is very relevant. You can have certain rules or certain loops that are depending on rules. For instance, do this until this is the case or if this is the case, do that, otherwise do that. So just like you would have that in recipes, you would have that in computer programs as well. And on a computer level, we're just going to see the basics. So you have memory mostly, and you have um, a piece that is a computer's most important working horse, the processor, which contains registers where little pieces of information can be gathered and can, for instance, then be multiplied or added together. Um, but we won't go too deep into details until we really need them. Now, what the CPU uh, has is um, uh, several components, like memory, it has a program count counter to see where in the program it is, um, and there are certain operations that it can execute in that case. Um, for that, I again would uh, like to do this later because then it will be uh, coming a little bit more in handy once we see the actual code and what the consequences of certain things are. So once we are going from a problem to a solution, uh, it's important that you start with the thinking part and that the programming from going from the algorithm to your actual C++ program should be actually fairly short. Um, the more thinking you tend to do in advance, the less uh, progr pro problematic the programming will be. Uh, nowadays, programming is often uh, um, a mix of searching Google for certain answers, then uh, creating a patchwork of those answers, and then hoping that your entire code will run. Now, this is definitely not what we're going to do in this course. We're going to see that these first two steps are the most important, and as long as you do that correctly, properly and correctly, um, the rest will come easy. If you know, for instance, how a compiler works and how your binary programming is then ex executed. So we're going to try to make you learn that programming is not a trial and error exercise, even though you constantly will be uh, facing errors, 
but we will be seeing it as an exercise where we first have to think about the algorithms and only then, once you have the algorithm, you go into the programming part. The C++ programming language is very old. Um, the C uh, language is even older, but uh, about uh, 40 years ago, Bjorn Stelstrup uh, developed uh, C++ as an extension of C. It is an imperative programming language, um, and it is also an object-oriented programming language, which ever since then was actually uh, the way to program for most people, having or having the ability to reason about objects, classes in an object-oriented way is nowadays something that most programmers would like and therefore languages like Java but also C++ are often preferred. Now program can be an object-oriented class uh, or, or object-oriented programming be seen as a collection of classes and those produce objects. Now C++ is in between the pro problem description and the CPP, a CPU operation, so the central processor unit operation. Um, however, many say that it's closer to the hardware, because in C++ you have to think about the representations of certain things, the way they actually are represented in memory, in your processor, in your computer. So let's look at our first C++ program, and let's not just look at them at the slides, let's also write something. So over here I'm already on our server, just like you would be uh, for creating exercise. I'm going to put this in a special test directory, go into this directory, which is empty as you just saw, and I'm going to start a first test program called test.cpp, and I'm going to immediately type in what you see on the, on the slide over there. I'm going to start with this include statement. Now include is basically um, a preprocessor uh, uh, statement that uh, says that once this program is being preprocessed, everywhere there's an include, it will be including a certain other uh, set of files, other code, a library if you mean. And in this case, this one is called iOS3. Now in C++, these libraries are, tend to have no extension whatsoever. If you're programming C, you might see those with the .h. But we're programming in C++, so let's start like that. And what we saw last time is also that if you're programming an executable, something that you can run on your operating system, then you need each time a main function. So let's write a main function just as it appears here. And I'm not sure what is standing here, but um, let's just say something like this. And there we go. I think this should work. This should work. And as we saw last time, we need to return um, to the operating system a type of code, which is usually used as an error. In this case, we assume that there is no error after we run our main function. Uh, we know that this is a function because we have the brackets here. Later we'll see functions where you can add things here, but now we just have a, uh, a function that is called main, and which returns in the end an integer. And this integer that we're going to return by default at the end is the zero over here. As you can see, our nano editor already uh, colors uh, everything nicely. Um, which means that uh, it recognizes, for instance, these purple things as part of the program. Now, if we would uh, say return with a big R, this is something completely different for the computer. And therefore, this is not colored. And this will definitely um, uh, give an error. So let's do this. And if we then execute this program, it, would, it should print hi there in our terminal. So we save. Always important to save before exiting. Um, and then what we're going to do next is, so once we have this, we have a file, but we can't execute this. We still need to translate this into machine codes that our operating system, our computer can understand. And therefore, we have to convert this text file into uh, an executable. So that's what we'll do here. So we're going to say this is called test, for instance. Um, and if we execute that, we don't get an error, which is great. Uh, it's always a little bit of suspense. 
but we're now at a stage where things tend to work. Now, as I said last time, once we want to execute this executable, so now we have in our directory several files. We have our executable, which is just called test, and we have our source code, which is called test.cpp. If we want to see how big those are, let me make this window a little bit bigger, so you can see what is in our directory. So we have our directories that we can change into the previous directory, the current directory, but our executable is about eight, well, almost 9,000 bytes large. Whereas our CPP file, it's just a few characters that we typed into, is 90 bytes. So it's very short. Now this thing is something that we can read, that we can see, it's just a few words. Whereas this is a collection of lots of commands that in the end execute whatever is here uh, described. So this you could say is the recipe that we could just see and interpret but that requires a lot of background information that is usually given through, for instance, those libraries, that IO stream that you just saw, and many other things. And that's why this file over here is much larger than this one. So once we execute tests, we get our hide there as a return value. And we also saw last time that if you want to see or want to make sure that um, that uh, this return is zero, we can also see that with echo, uh, dollar sign question mark uh, zero was indeed returned meaning we executed tests this executable and it returned an error code or a code of zero right so this was our first c++ program uh, last time it was kind of a c program but this was a, a c++ program what you saw already is that um, c++ is case sensitive so if you try to uh, change return into return with a capital R, it would definitely not work. Uh, here it says it's homework, we can quickly do this ourselves. So let's go back to our our text editor. The highlighting already shows you that it's not the same. Let's save this, get out, and try to compile it again. And there we have suddenly an error from our compiler saying error. Return was not declared in the scope, and this is definitely a problem. Um, in this case it suggests an alternative which is completely berserk, going crazy, but um, you get used to the fact that uh, errors coming back from our compiler are sometimes a little bit cryptic. So it's really important to make sure that little mistakes are not made while you're typing uh, this. So uh, you have to make sure that you type really correctly. And this is another reason why we use this nano editor, because you have to focus on just this and it doesn't autocomplete anything. So that you learn this. So if you do this now, it compiles again. Okay. Now, as we saw, there are several parts of our program, and the most important thing is our main function. Um, what we haven't done, however, and this is a really bad thing, is we haven't commented our code yet. There are two ways to comment our codes. One is the double slash, which means that everything that follows is a comment. The other one is the slash star, star slash, and everything between that is a comment. And normally I should have done actually some commenting here. So uh, there are two types of comments that you could use. So one uh, is, oops, there we go. So this is the way we comment something where, which could uh, take multiple lines. As we already saw, for all the exercises we will require a, na a name, uh, for instance here, uh, and some descriptions, especially for what is going to uh, um, happen in our program. For instance, Another type of comment is putting it uh, somewhere else. So like here, for instance, we could say, um, there we go. Now, if we later read this again, and if there's a little bit of code that is not as easy to understand, with comments, these things become a lot more understandable. Right, these comments are completely disregarded when we go and uh, compile all of this. So that is something that you don't have to worry too much about. And as a rule of thumb, comments are great, but don't make really long texts of this. Make sure that everyone, not only yourself in two weeks, for instance, but also other people, when they are reading your code, could understand this. 
So make sure it's in well-formed English, that it is not um, uh, leaving room for interpretation, and that it's easy to understand. Now the main function tells the compiler where the program starts and in which order these uh, commands that we just saw are executed. So our first command was printing this line hello there or hi there, and the second uh, thing that then after that was executed was a return statement which would return back to the operating system with code zero. And this we already saw over here. Right, so a first C++ program could then look like this, or like the other thing that I just saw, and this basically requires uh, um, a library. This is something that you will definitely have to do most of the time. This library allows you to use functions like the C out over here, for instance, um, and uh, end line, which we saw also, and this will allow us to make our first programs. Now, in the next session, we're going to see how we're going to do this at the end of the semester. So there I will start immediately with programming a program as if we could already um, program for a while. And uh, there I will show you how documenting your code will become important, how forming the ID will become important and only then programming. And hopefully without too many iterations where you have to solve errors and then improve your program. So that's it for now. We'll see each other next time.